As we get into the different types of quantitative research studies, a big distinction we need to understand is the difference between experiments and non-experiments. Those are the two broad classes of quantitative research. So what are the differences? Experimental research involves the researchers actively manipulating or changing something for the research participants. Often that manipulation is in the form of some kind of intervention that they have designed. Um, medicine uses a lot of interventional studies, which would be experiments. Think of like placebo and pharmaceutical trials. You give some participants a placebo, like a sugar feel, pill, and you give the other half of the participants the actual medicine you're studying, maybe a new cholesterol medication. You are changing and manipulating that. Those people in your study don't usually take that particular medicine or that sugar peel placebo. So you are creating a condition known as an experiment so that you could then che um, check the outcomes between the two groups to see if your intervention caused differences in the outcomes between the two groups. Those are often called clinical trials in medical research. You'll often also see them called randomized controlled trials or RCTs. That's a common um, way that people label experiments. On the other hand, non-experiments involve no manipulation or introduction of an experiment an intervention. We're just basically observing people as they naturally would be and collecting data. So because it's observational, a lot of people call these observational studies. So here's an example of an experiment. This is a quantitative study, remember, but it says at the top a randomized controlled trial. So we know automatically it's an experiment when you see that. But if you look here in the abstract under methods, you'll see that they split women into two groups. They were either placed into the early cord clamping, which means that after labor and delivery, they clamped the, um, the baby, the infant's cord in less than 30 seconds from delivery. Or they were put into a delayed cord clamping group, which means they delayed cord clamping until two to three minutes after birth. So that was artificially created and manipulated by the researchers in an effort to see which one of them did better on the outcomes, which it appears, based on the abstract, was hemoglobin levels and maybe some other stuff. But you'll see that we created groups. We did an intervention. One group got it, one group didn't, and we're testing the outcomes between the groups to see which one has better outcomes. That's an experiment. This is a non-experiment. This one is actually studying medication errors. And I picked this study for a particular reason, to show you that sometimes it is not ethical to conduct experiments. And one of the um, discussion questions this week is gonna have you think about this. Sometimes we can't do an experiment. In this question, I wanted to know what led to medication errors. I can't have two separate groups of nurses. The first group, I'm gonna tell them, okay, you all have to make a medication error. And the second group, you all cannot make a medication error. That's not ethical because I can't purposely make somebody make a medication error that could perhaps kill or severely injure a patient. It's not ethical or legal for that matter. So for some questions we want to know the answers to as researchers, there's no way to ethically manipulate it. So instead, we just have to collect data as it exists. And there are several ways that we can do that as researchers. We can get a group of nurses who have made a medication error and another group of nurses who have never made one and collect data that way, looking at it in two different groups. We've not manipulated anything. We're just looking at people who already have, in the past, made a med error. So that's one way we can get around it. Another example of unethical um, experimentation would be smoking. I can't tell one group of subjects, hey, you all have to start smoking two packs a day, while the other group cannot smoke at all. Okay, because it's not ethical. I don't wanna make someone who's a non-smoker just start smoking for my convenience for a study. So as you read through studies, you'll begin to understand why sometimes experiments can't happen. You know, experiments typically are very strong, rigorous studies. 
a lot of scientific researchers really want to do experiments, but sometimes we can't. And it all goes back to protections of ethical provisions for our clients and our patients.